So today we are, um, we're not here to train you. We're here to present some work that we um, did over the last year that we think you'll all be interested in and maybe um, you'll have some more ideas to share with us at the end. So it all started last year when our head of department, Tuba, came into our office and said, oh my gosh, I went to this school and I saw their literature program and it's amazing and we have to do this. We have to do something like this. She was so excited. So we said, okay, we'll try. And we investigated what their school was doing, what other schools were doing. But of course, it's a little bit like somebody else's program doesn't fit your program. There are some things that we can't do. All right. The clicker, we can go. Mm -hmm. um, every school is different, and the needs of every school is different. So you can't um, just copy what another school is doing. So watching another school is kind of like watching somebody drive a Ferrari when I'm driving a 2005 Volkswagen. You know, I can only do what I can do with the tools that I have. Okay. Uh, so there has been a mistake with the uh, tickets. Oh, let's go around. Uh, the speakers of Meral, Tanay, Doan, and Ayşegül İçkale is in room three. If anyone has it, my friend is going to take them here. It's in room three. Okay, then. <laughs> We're not giving anybody. No? Okay. No? Okay. okay, let's go. It's your last chance. Okay. So we decided that we would uh, choose the right books. That was the most important thing. So we went to the publishers, and of course, there's so many books to read, and we spent, I don't know, like two months just reading yeah. every single book that and was we in had the catalog. So many books actually, so many. And we couldn't decide, so we tried to match it with the Turkish curriculum of fiction, nonfiction, biography, autobiography, poetry. And then we narrowed it down to eight books. And we were like really proud of those eight books. And we showed them to Tuba teacher and we said, Here we chose the books. Now it's finished. And she said, Great, now you have to plan what you're going to do because I'm giving you four hours a week and you're going to have to teach one book for 10 weeks. This is not what we normally do. We normally use the readers at the end of the semester for a few weeks, or we teach it in one week, or we give it a summer homework. So, so this was the picture of how we really started doing things. We had an A3 blank, blank, blank paper looking at us. Um, we were looking at it. <laughs> so we had some colored pencils and two Turkish coffee. And then we sit down at the table and we were trying to find some ideas. How can you just cover a very teeny tiny book in 10 weeks of time? Because normally the students would go home and then read it and it would really finish in an hour. So we need to find some really interesting ideas and we really need to pull this paper in so much that the students uh, will be covering it in 10 weeks. And then something happened there. Like Tuba came and then said, no, no, no, no, it's not 10 weeks actually, it's 15 weeks for 8th graders. So I'm multiplying in my head 15 times 4. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is 60 lessons. How can one reader last for 60 lessons? Yes, it was so hard. And then uh, we started with the questions actually. So uh, what kind of students do we want to raise? What kind of things do we want our students to know? Uh, so we sat down with these questions in our minds and then the next day, we had those. N not quite the next day. That was three months. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> three it months. really took three months to get into this stage. So we fill in the papers, and we had eight of them. Actually, those papers traveled a lot around the school. We really they got stuck on the walls of our rooms. Uh, we thought that if we see them really often. We can come up with some different ideas. We, we let fill in them. We left them on the table for other teachers to come and sit down and add ideas. Yeah. We folded them up and put it in our pockets and took it home or on trips to hotels and to different places. Yeah, really, we, we lived with them literally for three months. And then we thought, okay, we did our job. Perfect. We were proud of our We product. showed it to Tuba and she's like, great. And then what happened? another piece of empty sheet because if you give this those papers with the brainstorming things to a teacher would they really go into the classroom and start teaching no way because those teachers mostly are accustomed to teaching a course book so they really have a very structured frame in their hands of course they are adding things but mostly the materials are provided by uh, a teacher's book yeah teacher's book actually and then <coughs> we uh, 
uh, tried to focus on a type of curriculum, but we needed to develop it from the beginning because it needs to be unique. And we came up with these uh, three really important things to build up something of our own. The first thing was the content. So what are we going to do with the students? Okay, I have this book. So actually this is my content, but I need to go, for example, I'm reading the book with my students and I came to this page, some specific pages, which will be my content, but how am I going to go further? How am I going to like move it beyond the classroom wall? And then the questions, we thought it was really important too. And then the outcome, what do we want our students to do at the end? So we'll here's the content. Yeah, we'll start with the content. So you can't see it very easily from here, but this is from Anne Frank, um, the obviously the abridged adapted version. And what we thought was really important was just to look at each page individually as a springboard to a number of lessons. So instead of dividing it by chapter, or we really divided it often by sentence or even a phrase. So early on in the book, 1934, the Frank family moves to the Netherlands and Anne goes to a Montessori school. So we stuck on that sentence and thought, well, what's a Montessori school? So we spent a number of hours and yeah. weeks trying to um, devise a lesson for the students to teach them what Montessori is, who Montessori was, what the theory behind Montessori education is, uh, why that would be different from where Anne Frank had previously gone to school. Yeah. And some of the content here, we, we couldn't, you can't just Google it and just put it on for the students. You, you have to teach yourself what the content in is and then teach it to the students. Yeah. So these are some samples of the other content that we put together from the other books. Some of them, they're all interdisciplinary. So they're from all the different subjects, science, math. We're not experts. I'm not a science, I teach math and science, but I'm not a math and science teacher. So I spend a lot of time and my very bad Turkish um, asking the Turkish science teachers to help me um, explain to children and to middle school children um, science and English. And in fact, sometimes we had guest speakers. Those teachers agreed to teach, for instance, um, history of human flight. We had the Turkish science teacher teach in Turkish in their own science lesson. Yeah, it was the heavier than air, lighter, lighter than, than air, a feather. hotter than hot air balloon fly kind of a thing. Actually, uh, the content can sometimes be given in their own uh, mother tongue because the teachers, the science teacher doesn't know any English. So uh, we thought that it's important for sometimes the student really knows the content well. So. World War II, for example. Yeah, exactly. We really spent a lot of time with the social studies teacher. So it was really fun working with those teachers too. And then the second thing comes, the questions. For this specific lesson, for the Montessori school, for example, we asked our students like, what is Montessori education like? So it was a very simple question for them because we already gave them the content. So it was a basic comprehension question. So what is this education? What did you understand? And then it goes to how is it different from our education system? And it's getting more Higher difficult. Level. And then what might be the advantages and disadvantages of it? Or what would an ideal education be like? So as you see, the questions are going higher in order. So also while preparing those questions, we kept four things in mind. Ask questions that are big enough to engage the students. What does this mean? So if you ask a student, uh, how many types of butterflies on blah, blah island? Okay, the student will just go there, Google it, and the answer comes in three seconds. So there's nothing like thinking. There's no thinking in it. It's not challenging it's a, it's enough. It's a chore. Yeah, exactly. Just go it and find me the answer. Uh, so it's they uh, really need to be big enough to challenge the students. So the questions should lead to the other questions in themselves. And the second thing is include discussion questions from comprehension to analytical, which will help students dig deeper uh, into the content that you provided them. <coughs> and the third thing is, which is really important, some students will not lead to an answer because it's teachers 
we automatically think that the question should have an answer, but actually no. Some questions don't have an answer. They just make the student think about themselves, about the other world, about everything. You just ask the question and make them think and come up with different ideas. Actually, we were seeking for the ideas, not the answers. And then let the learners ask questions because this is a long journey of questions. Sometimes when the student starts thinking, you can never stop them. They'll keep asking questions. But teacher, how's it gonna happen then? But teacher, what would happen if kind of things? And then another question comes up and then you build the lesson on this question. Never stop the questions, uh, students, to ask questions to. So a lot of our questions, some seem easy, but in fact they were difficult to answer. Some of them used unfamiliar grammar or grammar they had just learned, so past perfect, past present continuous, you know, all different kinds of tenses. Maybe they had just learned it, so they weren't comfortable using it, but they, if they're invested in the content, if they're invested in the story or the character or the plot, they are going to find a way to answer the question and they're going to ask you to help them to use that grammar to answer that question. It's their commitment and their investment that's important. Yeah, and some questions were really uh, lead to some subject area like science, social study, but some others are really like philosophical questions, let's say. And some of them the students had to research or had to come back with concrete answers or even more questions that we asked them to come to. We also thought it was really important to use quotes from the original sources because this is a literature class and while we're using an abridged and adapted book, the original is what we really need to respect as well because these are famous, famous writers and their quotes are important. So we looked at all the original books and took out what we thought were the most important quotes for the children to use that they could understand. And, and uh, from my experiences in the actual classroom environment, when you give them the real extracts to the students, sometimes they stu the students are uh, inspired to read more. When they see this actual quote, the actual language of the writer itself, some of them really went home and bought the real book and then started reading them. And they kept asking more and more questions which was really, really I nice mean, to see as a teacher. Generally, the whole book will be too difficult for yes. our students, but some of the quotes are easy for them to understand, and you could spend two or three, four lessons just on one quote. Yeah. And then the outcome comes. Uh, so here is the outcome that we uh, worked on for this specific lesson. Uh, we wanted our students to research on uh, various alternative educational types. Uh, and imagine yourself as a teacher in a Montessori school. In groups of four, prepare a lesson on colors, addition, subtraction, and multiplication. The students really went into the lab and then made a research on that. They found so many alternative education types, which was, they were so excited to see all of them, but actually, these kind of things also lead them question our education system too, which is to me good. Uh, and they were really excited to see these kind of things, what's happening outside in the world. And next year <laughs> we want those students, next year students to actually use the lesson plans that they made and perform them in the kindergarten. Yeah, so we're revising the program all the time. So really, for example, I really liked a lesson uh, by a student, he prepared a lesson to teach addition to a kindergarten that was perfect. So you should have seen them, really. <coughs> and the outcome was really flexible <coughs> because some of the uh, students uh, asked quest ask different questions in every classroom, so which led the teacher to change the direction of the lesson to somewhere else. So for some specific classes, the lesson went somewhere else as we didn't stop our students asking different questions. And also, <coughs> some, que some students were really good at arts, so they wanted to prepare a piece of art at the end of the thing. Some students were good at technology, so they preferred uh, working on some uh, digital things to make their presentation 
or some of them really wanted to prepare a hands-on poster to make their outcome visible to the other classroom. And it was tailored to the needs because as a teacher, you know your specific group of students lack some skills. If you think that your students need more writing things, you can want the outcome as a piece of writing. If you think that they lack presentational skills, so you may want them to present you something at the end of the thing. So it was so nice to shape students in those ways. And also the outcome. Sometimes you don't see the outcome immediately through an assessment or a test or an evaluation or a project or a homework. Sometimes the outcome will come 10 years down the line, like we heard this morning in the speech that sometimes you um, can inspire somebody and then 10 years later, you find out that they chose a profession or they decided to travel somewhere because of a book they read. Yeah. And it was always beyond the classroom walls because the students started going home uh, and asking these questions to their parents. And then they come up with different answers and they came out to the classroom back and they ask, started asking different kind of kinds of questions. And we listened to these kind of stories from parents as well, which was also really good for our, th the program. Huh. And then? So she's gonna open up the link to show you what our actual finished curriculum looked like, which is just, just one of our books. Um, every week, the teachers would meet for two hours and plan each and every lesson. So we had planned the week and we had almost planned the lesson. Then she would, Nalan would sit with the actual teachers and plan each and every part of the lesson. Um, just while she's getting that open, I want to tell you a story. My daughter is in seventh grade and she is a teenager who doesn't like to talk generally. So, and she doesn't like to talk on the phone to my mother in New York, except to say, hi, how are you? But for some reason, she decided to tell my mother that she was reading a book on um, aboriginal, aboriginal women in Australia, The Rabbit Proof Fence. And she decided to tell my mother she was reading that book and how interesting it was. So my mother went and bought the book and then put on Facebook that she was reading the book and how interesting it was. And then there were 50 comments of other people who had gone and read the book or watched the movie. And my daughter was so... Um, influenced by that because she could see that her intellectual opinion had value and that people were listening to her. Yeah. So should we just choose? I don't care. Choose I anyone. Preference. Nope. Okay. So here are the six books, eight books that we had done and okay. Rabbit proof? Of course. So you just want to keep scrolling down. So here are all of the um, websites and research places that we had done that the teachers are required to look at for the lessons. And then um, each lesson is here is planned what page of the book they're going to read. These are links to brain pop videos or to um, field trips they're going to do or writing samples we want from them. Presentations. Here's the science on um, nutrition after three days of not eating because the girls walk through the desert for three days. And this is their teacher's book. But the teachers have um, ownership of it. They made it, so they can't complain about it. Um, they're the ones responsible for it. They can change it. It's theirs. Yep. They own it. Can they can be room? proud of it. So now, I think, we were going to talk about the um, feedback that we got from the teachers. As I said before, the teachers really enjoyed teaching it. While it was harder than teaching from a regular teacher's book, they really felt like because they were part of the process, the decision-making process, um, they put more value in their lessons. Yeah. And what about your A-level and B-level students? Because there's a big difference in their abilities. Yeah, the A-level a students are always good at finding their way out. Whatever type of thing you give them, they're always okay. Their marks didn't change on the exams, but what changed came with the B-level students because <coughs> they were happy to, uh, because up to now, we gave them some duties like fill in the blanks, do it, open your book, that kind of thing. The student might not actually have an idea of the form of the language, but every child has an idea 
what your ideal education is or how do you feel when you don't eat for days so what's your uh, how do you like your teacher to be kind of thing the student anyway will have an idea and if you have an idea uh, you are more like eager to give an answer to the questions that are being asked so this really hired up the B level students and the teachers did you talk about the teachers how the I talked about your teachers but also uh -huh. the class teachers in the primary school saw what we were doing so now starting this year our class Turkish class teachers are revising their science and their um, and their math lessons so they're all interdisciplinary so they're starting that starting in September for uh, first grade and third grade so that's really exciting uh, what's uh, more exciting for me to see is that <coughs> actually as teachers we turned out to be the ones uh, whom we really raise up because we want our students to be like questioning, searching, having a uh, global lens. So we had to be like those people in order to raise up this kind yeah, of we people. Had to go because through we each search step. a lot, we learn, we also question, we are being questioned. So that was perfect. The students and the teachers, now it was all fair for both the teachers and the students. And then? Now it's your turn. <laughs> so we gave you a piece of paper. We think this is really important to understanding how our process worked yeah. and that you can um, take one page from a book and spread it out into a huge bunch of ideas that might be messy and organic, but even one page from a book can lead to uh, so many different ideas. So we gave you a piece of paper, uh, an act extract from a reader, and if you walk around, you can find a matching paper up here so if you have an idea if you could write it down just scribble it on one of these papers and then um, when we tell you you're gonna do something else yeah <laughs> next step the next surprise. step yeah. so first you could look so at the piece can of you paper please take your extracts from the book and then go around the room and find the matching uh, extract with yours they're scattered all around the room. You need to get up and find yours. So if you find yeah. your and extract here on too. the wall, you can start working. We can lift this up. They're on the sideways. They're on the sideways already. Mine's off. Mine's not off. Not off. Uh, we're running off out of time now. Oh my god, nobody's listening. Everybody wants to continue working? Um. All right, now here comes the next step. You're going to see these, these stickers. stickers next to the papers. Now you can just go around the room again. You can have a look at the ideas and you can put these dots like this, sticky dots. If you think something's a next really good to idea. the idea that you like, oh, I can do it, really. All right, so go over the room and stick them next to the ideas. It can be a question, it can be a content, or an outcome. Yeah, well, whatever you like on the, paper. on the paper. Here we go. Here. <laughs> Here. Yeah, you can. Okay, Every spot has it. Mm -hmm. You can use them. So we just gave you a little taste of what we did for um, three months basically, with other teachers, showing them pieces of paper, reading the books, reading each page of the book, talking, and really planning well. Um, some of our teachers are sitting in the back of the room, like Sarah Kurenberg, she's also part of our program development, and she was um, really involved in some of the books that we planned, as well as the other English teachers. And I see really nice I papers, know. like full of red dots, so I would like to read them all, maybe make sure we can revise <laughs> the program. Again, <laughs> stealing ideas. Yeah, uh, <laughs> sharing ideas. Yeah, because that's what we're all here to do. We're all here to make connections and share ideas, and we ask our students to do that. We're always asking them to make connections, share ideas, ask questions, and that's what we did. And we went through all the tasks that we asked our students to do: collaborative learning, teamwork, research, presentation skills. We had to do all of that just to start teaching it to the students. Exactly. So. 
Let's go back to the beginning of the story and close it this way. So we got inspired by a TED call, a different TED call, uh, who was doing really nice things. And then we are here to give you some ideas about what you can do to change a little bit in your own schools. So we have the right, as you see here, uh, how many schools do you know? What, what else do you know about yeah, in Turkey that has that kind of community. choice and community? So uh, change starts here. So if we are complaining about uh, education system, so we are the people who are going to change it. And so we have more chances than the other people do. So I hope you're going to come with some really different ideas next year and inspire us back, and the cycle will go on this way. Thank you for Thank you. standing. <laughs>